The Iraqi government has seized control of the disputed oil-rich city of Kirkuk, and Kurdish forces have retreated from other major contested areas in the north. So how will this affect the Kurds' push to secede from Baghdad? This is Inside Story. Hello again, I'm James Bays. It's a battle for power, sovereignty and oil. And Baghdad said it sent its strongest message so far to the Kurdish leadership, taking just a day to take charge of Kirkuk and the oil fields around the city. Last month, voters in Iraq's Kurdish region, as well as some disputed areas, overwhelmingly opted to secede. But Baghdad, as well as neighbours Iran and Turkey, have fiercely opposed the move. We'll get to our panel of guests to discuss all this, but first, this report from Charles Stratford. The Kurdish flag no longer flies in the centre of Kirkuk. The city now officially back in the hands of the Iraqi government, its forces had made a rapid advance. Launched in the middle of the night, 15 hours later, the industrial area, airport, military base and critical oil fields were under the control of Iraqi forces. Soon after, they marched into the centre of the city. Iraqi officials were quick to declare victory. The joint military operation was launched at dawn and progressed significantly. As the troops approached the area of Tikrit and the North Oil Company, they were confronted by some rebels who tried to hinder the progress of the advancing units. Our troops returned fire and silenced its source. Thank God today we have achieved all our goals according to our plan. The US military, which had trained both sides in this dispute, tried to downplay the escalation in a statement blaming the firefight on the darkness, calling it a misunderstanding. But Kurdish fighters painted a different picture of what was happening on the ground. I don't know what is happening exactly because we have been in the fight since four in the morning in the areas of Taza. We have suffered casualties, including martyrs, and now we have withdrawn to this position. Some of the other forces have pulled out. They didn't fire a single shot. And that's all. But we, the 37th Brigade, are holding our position here. Thousands fled the city as the forces approached, mixed in among them Kurdish fighters. Now, as the US urges dialogue and calm, the question is, what's next? Will Iraqi forces and their militias pursue the Kurdish people and fighters? That answer will have an impact here and around the globe. Oil prices are climbing with the news. The possibility of, uh, of uh, a civil war perhaps in Iraq with uh, Kurdish forces fighting both the Iraqi army and possibly uh, Iranian militias uh, w did not play well with the, uh, with the world's oil traders and so the perception is that uh, prices will rise uh, until that sort of event risk is completely uh, characterised, shall we say, and understood. Most world powers had warned the Kurdish regional government not to go ahead with a non-binding referendum where the majority of people voted for secession from Iraq. Now the people of this region and their government are finding out there is a very real price to be paid in their search for independence. The speed with which the Iraqi army were able to achieve their aim has left the Kurdish regional government shocked and wanting answers. And already there are questions being asked as to whether certain members of one of the main two Kurdish political parties may have colluded with the Iraqi military in order to ensure such a swift and easy victory in and around Kirkuk. Charles Stratford, Al Jazeera, Erbil. So why is Kirkuk so important to both the Iraqi government and the Kurdish leadership? The Kurdish people in Iraq have autonomy in this area in the north of the country. Kirkuk, though, lies outside that region, but it has a large Kurdish population and they consider it the centre of their historical homeland. But Kirkuk is part of a large stretch of territory that Baghdad also claims. Kirkuk is home to significant numbers of Arabs, Turkmen and Christians. The issue is further complicated by other groups. For example, Shia militias, along with Iraqi forces, have in recent hours taken over the city of Sinjar, as well as the disputed towns of Makmur, Qa and Bashikar. 
And the conflict has garnered attention from Iraq's neighbours, Turkey, Iran and Syria, because they too have Kurdish-dominated regions shaded here. Well, let's bring in our guests to discuss all of this. And in Baghdad, we have Muafak al-Rubai. He's former Iraqi national security advisor who's now a member of parliament for Baghdad. In her bill, Karuk Koshnau, a Kurdish political analyst and professor at the Bight Institute. And in London, Talha Abdul Rasak, a researcher at the University of Exeter's Strategy and Security Institute. Welcome to you all. I'd like to start with you in Baghdad, Mr. Al Rubai. You're a former national security advisor, so you have extremely good sources. I'd like your perspective right now of the situation on the ground. What brought us to this is uh, the declaration of the referendum by Mr. Barzani. Uh, so uh, the Council of Representatives in Baghdad and the federal government has authorized the prime minister and commander in chief, authorized him to, in, uh, to regain control of all territories which were taken by uh, Mr. Barzani illegally. Uh, on the top of the uh, unconstitutional referendum he has declared. So uh, the, the all, all Iraqis uh, are behind the, the government and behind the popular mobilization forces and behind the Iraqi security forces to take over the control uh, of uh, Kirkuk and the what they call disputed uh, territories. And can you just uh, tell us, is... can you just tell us, Mr. Al Rubai, can you tell us what the situation is now with regard to the city of Kirkuk and the other areas? Are we basically now nearly back to where we were in 2014? Uh, I, th I think we are now, and uh, you can, you have to come to see the rejoice and the, the happiness of people in Kirkuk, uh, all over Kirkuk, the, the city. This is a unique city, a third of it is Kurds. A third of it, uh, another third is Turkmen, and a third of it's uh, Arabs, and 10% uh, of Christians. So this is a, a man. This is like a unique uh, city, uh, and Mr. Barzani wanted to basically rape this uh, this city and impose his own uh, Kurdish uh, uh, view on it. Well, I think there might be some who contest your figures because, of course, there hasn't been a proper census there. Uh, Mr Koshnow in Erbil, can I start by asking you, what is the feeling, what's the atmosphere there like now? Uh, actually, uh, the situation is uh, under control and everything is uh, fine. And actually, the uh, Kurdish leaders are now... Uh, 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 decide to uh, not fighting with our brothers uh, uh, with our bro brothers and uh, with the Iraqi army because we fight side by side uh, against ISIS and especially the Peshmerga are very brave and they fight uh, uh, on behalf of the free world and uh, they defeat ISIS and uh, now they don't want to to, to fight uh, uh, our uh, brothers in Iraqi army but if we go back to the history why we did the referendum? The, the, the reason is, the main reason is uh, the Iraqi government uh, in Baghdad, they didn't uh, uh, implement the, the constitution. They cut the budget, the 70% of uh, Kurdistan budget, and also they didn't give uh, a Kurdish right. So the Kurdish people decide to uh, to vote for to vote uh, majority of Kurdish people, 92 percent of the Kurdish people decide to uh, to de decide for referendum and say yes, we don't want to be with Iraq anymore. So this the situation is now uh, we, we don't want we, Kurdish people is uh, peaceful. Kurdish people want uh, dialogue. We don't want to fight our brothers. We don't want internal war. We don't want to be uh, like a, 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 to make a sacrifice uh, in uh, in our side and in the Iraqi army side. So the situation is now is uh, complex, but uh, I am optimistic. The dialogue will the dialogue will will uh, will be uh, between the Iraqi uh, uh, leaders and uh, will, uh, with the Kurdish leaders soon, and uh, uh, everything will be fine. 
but uh, finally we want to uh, to implement the constitution of Iraq but all the reasons all the conflicts is happened because the Iraqi the central government of Iraq failed to implement the the constitution of Iraq since 2003 okay. until 2014 okay we'll, we'll come to, we'll come we'll we come we'll come, them, uh, we'll come to talk we we'll come to talk chances. we'll come to talk to, about that as we go through the program but it does seem the tone has changed there in Erbil just for me to follow up to you uh, because the Peshmerga military council when the units first moved uh, from Baghdad and started this operation said it was a flagrant declaration of war against the nation of Kurdistan and yet now you've just given up your positions. As I told you, uh, we have right to, to uh, hold the referendum. We, uh, as uh, it mentioned in the United Nations Charter, so uh, we didn't make a mistake. I'm not uh, asking. Uh, I'm not asking you about the referendum. The I'm not asking you about the referendum. I'm just asking. The, the tone seems to have changed. The language seems to have changed from Erbil. At one point, you sounded like you were going to defend these positions, uh, and now it sounds from Kurdish leaders. Uh, and we tried to get um, Kurdish leaders on this program, and uh, some difficulty getting any who would appear. They seem to have gone quite quiet, and you seem to have now decided to give up the disputed ground. Is that right? No, that's not right. Actually, we didn't change. We, uh, we fight for our rights, but we want to have, to, to, to have our rights by, by dialogue, by negotiation, not by fight. We don't want to fight. Uh, we, we fight at ISIS. We defeat ISIS on behalf of the free world, but we don't want to fight the, our brothers uh, and uh, sisters in the Hashti Shabi or the Iraqi army. We want to have our. We want to bring our rights to uh, to take our rights by peacefully, by dialogue and by uh, negotiation. Okay, Mr. Abdul Razak in London, get your perspective on this. Um, give us some idea of what's going on from your view within the Kurdish community, because there seems to be a bit of a disagreement and a disagreement potentially between the two main Kurdish parties on how to move forward. Well, I think, first of all, what we have here is a classic case of uh, mischaracterization for political purposes in the sense that, on the one hand, you have um, uh, the gentleman from Baghdad saying that the, uh, everyone is behind the Hashd al-Shabi, the popular mobilization forces in the Iraqi army, and everyone in Karakuk is jubilant. Um, over a thousand families fled the city, so I'm sure they're not jubilant. And on the other hand, you have the argument from Erbil saying that everything is under control and we do not want to fight. But as you rightly stated, uh, just a day or two ago, they were issuing statements which could only be characterized as fighting talk. The reason why that that's broken down is because, uh, frankly, I mean, on Sunday, as has been reported, the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guard Quds Force Commander Qasem Soleimani was actually in Soleimaniya, which is the stronghold of the PUK. And he it was still unclear as to what he said to them, but what is very apparent is following that meeting, the PUK started to withdraw from its positions south of Kirkuk. Now, these are PUK Peshmerga fighters. The Peshmerga itself is obviously divided between the KDP Peshmerga and the PUK Peshmerga. It's not actually a united force. And these, this, the fractious na nature of the Peshmerga has been laid to bear and its weaknesses have been shown. So it's all well and good saying that the Peshmerga fought on behalf of the free world, but we have to look at the internal fissures that led to this. If the PUK withdrew from its positions and left the KDP holding the bag, then that is the reason why they are no longer willing to fight. It's not because they are trying to negotiate, but, you know, at the end of the day, what happened to fighting to the last man? That all kind of dissipated. Mr. al Rubai, we heard their mention of Qasem Soleimani, who is the head of the Quds Force. Um, who has actually directed this operation? Is it directed by your government there in Baghdad, or is it really being directed from Iran? It's totally and exclusively under the control and authorized and leadership and the command of the prime minister and the commander in chief. OK, to be uh, clear this, then, is it, Mr. Soleimani currently in Iraq? Is he involved in this on, operation? Mentioning, mentioning the name of Qasem Soleimani as tra people trying to distract the main issue. The main issue which has created this problem is Mr. Barzani declaration of the referendum, and uh, the, and Mr. Barzani trying to create a new realities on the ground, 
new de facto by controlling and well by con by controlling the disputed territories and this is what the the Iraqi security forces the popular mobilization forces the federal police uh, the or, or, uh, even the uh, even the Peshmerga from the PUK side uh, are getting together to reverse this trying to uh, Mr. Barzani's ambition, which is an illegal and unconstitutional uh, ambition. What brought us to here is the is the is Mr. Barzani. Mr. Barzani is squarely responsible for what is happening now. And while we are while we are fighting terrorism for the last three and a half years and we are nearly there we still we still fighting with our counterterrorism uh, forces are still busy in in the western provinces in in the upper euphrates valley while while our uh, iraqi security forces are busy trying to uh, fight and finish daesh unfortunately mr barzani was trying to create and control a new territories in the in the in Kirkuk and in the in Salahuddin and in Diyala and in in Nineveh, this is not acceptable. That's why all Iraqis are united behind their Iraqi security forces to uh, to try to regain the control. And I can tell you, there is nothing will stop the Iraqi security forces, supported by the popular mobilization forces. Uh, to 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 go and control all the territories all over the country because government need to impose and implement their sovereignty and their rule of law on all territories in Iraq. My I... mention, mentioning the Iranians and Quds Force and the Qasem Soleimani, uh, this is all trying distractional tactics. It's trying a tactics to try to distract the main attention of the problem. Where is the problem? Is it, has, it, has Qasem Soleimani created this problem or Mr. Barzani created this problem? Yes, but, you know, yes, but you know, Mr. Al-Rubai, the context of this. You know that he is part of a force that's just had fresh sanctions on it uh, put by the Trump administration. So, yes, I, I appreciate you're talking about events on the ground, but there is a wider context to this which could be a problem for your government going forward in its relations with the Trump administration? Well, as far as uh, our, we are concerned, Trump administration uh, uh, is, uh, is behind united, federal, uh, prosperous and secure Iraq. That's their declare, de declared the intention and that's their, their de declared uh, position. And that's what we are following. Well, that's what we are dealing with the United States uh, about. And we have a, a strategic framework agreement with the United States, uh, which uh, uh, which states very clearly. We signed this at the end of 2008. Uh, it states very clearly that the United States of, of America is behind United Federal Iraq, and that's why they are they are, they are, they are supporting the federal government to regain control on the disputed territories and even furthermore. You say that they are supporting you. Uh, that question was d directly asked at the White House at a news conference in the last 24 hours to President Trump. This was his response. We don't like the fact that they're clashing. We're not taking sides, but we don't like the fact that they're clashing. We, we, well, let me tell you, we've had for many years very good relationship with the Kurds, as you know, and we've also been on the side of Iraq. Even though we should have never been in there in the first place, we should never have been there. But we're not taking sides in that battle. Mr. Abdul Razak in London, there you have it, the president saying he's not taking sides. And here you have a situation where, on both sides, there are forces that have been armed and trained by the US. Well, I think... What's clear from the U.S.'s position is that um, following, obviously, the, the referendum result um, after the 25th of September, um, they've made several efforts, them, the United States, that is, the, the British government and other major powers, they tried to curtail and to prevent the independence referendum. They tried to convince Mr. Barzani to uh, pr stop the referendum and to even, you know, roll it back a little bit, but he refused. I think... What happened there was that Mr. Barzani underestimated the regional response, and that includes a U.S. and NATO ally, Turkey, whereby uh, the Turks have had a long 
excellent relationship, frankly, with Mr. Barzani, and that they've developed economic ties um, to the extent where the Kurdistan region is probably, the, I think, their third largest export market. So he was banking on Turkish support, and who obviously they're the ones who have been exporting Karkuk oil that was being uh, handled by the KRG through Jehan uh, port, and they were sending oil through to the rest of the world. Um, as a result of that, and, uh, and Mr. Barzani underestimating the Turkish resolve, what happened is that the entire region coalesced against him. So you had the Iranians, the Iraqis, and the Turks all agreeing on the same thing, which rarely happens throughout the region, especially those three countries. Um, I mean, obviously, Iraq has a lot of strong known ties to Iran, but Turkey has been at loggerheads with Iraq over the Bashika base, for example, and uh, you know, the Turkmen populations in uh, Tel Afar and other areas. So to have them all sit at the table and agree that you know, we have to stop any moves towards Kurdish independence is quite significant. And obviously, this is related to Kurdish populations in Iran, Kurdish populations in Turkey, and also in Syria. And each of these countries are afraid that the Kurds may then call for greater autonomy within those countries. Mr. Barzani massively underestimated that and has led to the situation today. However, it is wrong to say that you know, this is just a distraction by bringing in Qasem Soleimani. You are quite correct in saying that the future of the Iraqi government and its relations with the United States is at risk with the involvement of Qasem Soleimani and the IRGC. For instance, the Interior Ministry of uh, Iraq and the Federal Police are almost entirely staffed by the Badr organization, which is a Shia jihadist group linked to the IRGC. This is a major policy concern for Baghdad, or at least it should be, but it also demonstrates how US influence is slipping if they're still willing to filter weapons, US-made weapons, to these groups to use in their internal disputes. Mr. Koshnar in Erbil, you've heard both of our other guests say that the Kurdish leader, uh, Mr. Bazani, has made major strategic mistakes here. Do you agree perhaps the timing of the referendum was wrong? Do you agree perhaps he shouldn't have included Kirkuk and disputed areas in the referendum? Uh, no, I'm not agree with them uh, because uh, Kurdish have right to, uh, to vote. It's, uh, uh, if we go back to the United Nations, uh, to the char charters of the United Nations, it's a, a freedom of speech, freedom of to vote uh, your destiny, to, uh, to have your uh, self-determination. It's, a, uh, uh, it's a, 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 our right. But we, we say that uh, just uh, the Iraqi government in, in Baghdad is the result why we, why we hold, hold the referendum. And uh, actually, Peshmerga bravely defended uh, on, in Kirkuk and in, in the Nainawa, in the Mosul uh, area, while the Iraqi army uh, leave the people to, to slaughter uh, 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 under the hands of the ISIS to be slaves. And the Peshmerga defended uh, uh, bravely uh, 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 the, the, the people. And uh, actually, now we, we uh, as a Kurdish people, uh, we want uh, to have our rights peacefully, as I mentioned before. And uh, uh, the, what the Kurdish leader decide to hold the referendum is because the Iraqi, the central government in Iraq, uh, uh, didn't implement when we give them the chance when when they have time from 2003 until 2014 they didn't implement the uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the 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 constitution of Iraq and also they uh, the the Iraqi government uh, didn't build the federal democratic government and also it's not the Kurdish suffering now it's also Sunni people suffering under the uh, the Shia government in Baghdad and also uh, there's a control the, the 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 army and the part of the army uh, Hashd al-Shabi controlled as my friend in London mentioned by Qasem Soleimani and by the Iran so uh, uh, the, the the Iraqi government now it's uh, uh, in the in the hand of uh, some people that uh, they want to re-elect in 2018. We have to leave it there. Thank you to our guests. 
Muwafak al Rubai, Karuk Koshnau, and Talha Abdul Rasak. If you want to know more about this subject, go to the place where you can always watch the program again and find out more. That's on our website, aljazeera.com. If you want to air your views or tell us what we should talk about next time around, we're on Facebook. Find us at facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. Or you can use Twitter. Our handle is AJ Inside Story. I'll be back in this chair soon, in fact, just under 24 hours from now. From the whole team here, bye for now.